السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم لا إله إلا أنت وحدك لا شريك لك يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, today, Today's session uh, will, will focus on the seventh after action uh, that would draw us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will get us ready, will get us more prepared to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day when we when we leave this dunya. So this outer action that we're going to talk about today is seeking the lawful and uh, loving the halal. SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gave us orders. And he uh, prevented us from doing a lot of things. So we have things to do, things not to do. We have things that are lawful and things that are haram. And in between, there are things that are not clear. Is it this way or this way? So it's on the borderline. And of course, these things go in all in all uh, aspects in uh, food, drink, clothing, work, um, in uh, uh, getting sustenance, in buying, selling. Uh, husband-wife relationship, social relationship, financial relationships, public relationships. So there are things in all, all the fields of life that are either halal or haram. So we have, we have to seek the halal. We have to seek uh, what is permissible and we have to be away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to be away from has ordered us to be away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says in uh, surah an-nur ayah 51 inma kana qawla al-mu'minin idha du'u ila Allah wa rasulih liyahkum baynahum ay yaqulu سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So the only statement of the true believers, so this is what the true believers say, when they are called to Allah and to his messenger to judge between them, to, to judge in their affairs. So when they... Uh, uh, brief, uh, when, when they are called by Allah and the, the, his messenger وسلم, to judge about their affairs they would say we hear and we obey who are these and those are the successful ones أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ so Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us, we have to obey. Then, those successful ones accept 
all the orders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they adhere to that by fulfilling and applying the narration of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ فَرَضَ فَرَائِضَ فَلَا تُضَيِّعُوهَا وَحَرَّمَ حُرُمَاتٍ فَلَا تَنْتَهِكُوهَا وَحَدَّ حُدُودًا فَلَا تَعْتَدُوهَا وَسَكَتَ عَنْ أَشْيَاءً مِنْ غَيْرِ نِسْيَانٍ فَلَا تَبْحَثُوا عَنْهَا So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, God has made certain things binding. So do not neglect them. Do not lose the rewards for them. So he made certain things as fard. And he has prohibited certain, certain things. So do not violate them. Do not do any of those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. He fixed certain limits, so do not transgress them. And Allah, without being forgetful, has said nothing about certain things. He did not mention them. He did not talk about them. So do not search into them. So from this, we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made certain things permissible. So the halal and the haram, the, the lawful and the prohibited uh, have a lot of uh, fiqh rules in Islam because they are very important in the life of the Muslim. And they have uh, uh, as we mentioned, they, they, there are many, the, these rules are applied to many aspects of life. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, made that very clear. And he said, Al halal bayin, wal haram bayin, wa bayna dalika umurun mushtabiha. لا يدري كثير من الناس أمن الحلال هي أم من الحرام فمن تركها فمن تركها استبرأ لدينه وعرضه so من تركها whoever uh, so the hadith starts with the the lawful is clear al halal bayin and the unlawful is clear. So al-halal bayin wal haram bayin. And between that are matters that are doubtful. They're not clear. Many of the people do not know whether it's lawful or unlawful. فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا اسْتِبْرَاءً لِدِينِهِ وَعِرْضِهِ فَقَدْ سَلِمْ so whoever leaves these things that are doubtful to protect his religion and his honor, so then, فقد سلم, then he will be safe. وَمَنْ وَاقَعَ شَيْئًا مِّنْهَا يُوشِكُ أَنْ يُوَاقِعَ الْحَرَامِ And... Uh, Whoever falls into something from them, from this category, the unclear category, the doubtful category, 
then he soon will have fallen into the unlawful. Why? So this is the reason. من يرعى حول الحما يوشك أن يواقع ألا وإن لكل ملك حما ألا وإن حما الله محارم So why? Why? Why it would lead to doing haram? Following, uh, uh, do, uh, doing something doubtful? Why would it be leading to haram? Why? So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu explains he says, it's just like if someone grazes his animal around a sanctuary, he would soon wind up in it. So, so he would, he indeed for every king, every king, there is a sanctuary. And indeed, Allah's sanctuary is what he made unlawful. So do not try to get closer to that area. Do not try. And as we mentioned, there are these things, whoever avoids them, even if they are halal, but there is a fine line between them and the haram. So if if someone uh, uh, be, uh, if someone tries to be away from them and he is away from them just to be safe, then that 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 man is really saved because he left it just for to protect his religion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made things lawful and unlawful. Now, today we're going to concentrate and to focus on the lawful things. Allah has made it permissible for people to work and to get a profit. But he has to work in something halal. So what, what is uh, in, in uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 168, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha al-nasu kulu mimma fi al-ardi halalan tayyiban wa la tattabi'u khutuwati al-shaytan innahu lakum adubun mubin. So Allah is addressing mankind and asking them to, to eat and to gain from whatever is on the earth that is lawful and good. Halalam tayyiba. So do everything that is lawful and good. This is how your life should be. And do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. Why? Because indeed, he is a clear enemy to mankind. Yeah, he, he, shaitan has promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَإِنْ أَخَّرْتَنِي إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ لَأَحْتَنِكَ النَّذُرِّيَّتَهُ So he refused to... Uh, make sujood to Adam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ca uh, casted him off Jannah. But he promised Allah that he will keep whispering, he will keep deceiving mankind. The children of Adam alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us as we mentioned earlier, whenever we see, we read at the beginning of the ayah, Ya ayyuhal nas, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, then there is an order after it. So the order of Allah here is to do everything lawful and not to follow the footsteps of shaitan. 
So why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala followed the order of uh, doing good and eating good, uh, eating halal, uh, uh, and doing everything that's halal. Why did he follow it by uh, the footsteps of shaitan? He ordered us not to follow the footsteps of shaitan. So he, uh, some of the people uh, of uh, of knowledge, they say that. Uh, Shaitan would uh, do everything to get people away from halal. And to do unlawful things. And in another ayah, Allah mentions something that's very important. So just how to avoid uh, shaitan. Allah said in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 172, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, again, there is an order. What is it? Kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnakum. Washkuru lillahi in kuntum iyyahu ta'abudun. So Allah is ordering people to eat from what's lawful, to eat from, to gain what is lawful, to do what is lawful. And then they have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah said, in لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Every time you, uh, you thank me for the bounties that I have uh, bestowed on you, then I will increase you. in شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ So now, this is what we have to pay attention to. Getting sustenance for our families should be halal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the order to work and to do ourselves to support our families, to support ourselves. So he said in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ فَاسْعَوْا إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعَ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Oh, you who believe. Ya ayyuhal ladhina aman. Iza nudiya li salati min When there is the call of a prayer on the day of Juma, which is the Friday prayer, what should you do? Fasa'u ila thikrillah. Proceed to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wadharul bay'an. Leave trading. Leave, leave your work. That is better for you if you if you only know. Now, the prayer is finished. فَإِذَا قُضِيَتِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And when the prayer is done, when, when the prayer has been concluded, then dispress within the land. Go, seek, seek from the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember Allah that, and by doing that, you may succeed. So the order here, فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ so go work and try to get from the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this ayah, these two ayahs, 
there is uh, an order in the in the uh, in the first ayah to perform the Jum'ah prayer and there is also an order to work and to gain sustenance but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying when it's the time for the prayer then you leave whatever you're doing you leave your work and you go to 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 pray and he ended the ayah with uh, uh, an order with an order uzkuru allah kathira uzkuru allah kathira so remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the prayer is done remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention all these things together? The order for the prayer, the order to, to work and to get uh, um, uh, sustenance for the family, and what else? To remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Ashur, uh, Allah be pleased with him, he said, ordering Allah, Allah ordering people to remember him. In that, there is a protection for, 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 for mankind from being immersed in dunya, from being immersed in work, from being immersed in this vanishing uh, life that we are living and forgetting the day after. So remembering Allah will make us not forget that. But working, working, working without remembering Allah, without performing uh, the prayers or delaying the prayers or whatever, that would be shaitan, shaitan's work. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to work. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, طَلَبُ كَسْبِ الْحَلَالِ فَرِيضَةٌ بَعْدَ الْفَرِيضَةٌ So, trying to earn a lawful livelihood, livelihood is an obligatory duty. فريضة. In addition to the duties which are obligatory. So first you do your prayers, and then, and then you try to earn a lawful livelihood. And of course, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, always cared about building a perfect society. And he didn't want people just to sit on the road and ask for money. If someone can work, then he should work. So he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَا أَكَلَ أَحَدٌ طَعَامًا قَطُّ خَيْرًا مِنْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ مِنْ عَمَلِيَّتِهِ وَإِنَّ نَبِيَّ اللَّهِ دَاوُودَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ كَانَ يَأْكُلُ مِنْ عَمَلِيَّتِهِ So no one has ever eaten better food than what he eats as a result of the labor of his hands. So this is an order, this is an ur urgency that people should work to support themselves, their families. God's, uh, uh, God's messenger, God's prophet David, Dawood alayhi salam, used to eat from what he he had worked for uh, with his hand. And in another narration, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized work. And he said, 
لئن يحتطب أحدكم حزمة على ظهره خير له من أن يسأل الناس أعطوه أو منعوه So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted people to work. And he said, it's better for any one of you to carry a bundle of wood on his back and sell it than to beg of someone, whether he gives him or he refuses. Then begging and asking people to give, to give him money. So, there is an order, there is an order to, to work. And there is an order for lawful work. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the messengers to work. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Ayah 51, Allah says, Ya ayyuha al-rusulu kulu min al-tayyibati wa'amalu saliha inni bima ta'amaluna alim So, O oh messengers, ya ayyuha al-rusul eat from the good food and work righteousness wa'amalu saliha Indeed, I I of what you do I am knowing. Inni alim. So, once Sayyidina Umar said, I heard the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, talking about sustenance, talking about rizq, talking about the lawful rizq. And he said, لو أنكم توكلتم على الله حق توكله لرزقكم كما يرزق الطير تغدو خماصا وتروح بطانا. So this is what Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم has said that if you were to rely upon Allah with reliance he is due. So, just complete reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What would happen? You would be given provision like the birds. How? They go out hungry in the morning and they come back with full bellies in the evening. So we have to depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of, the, one of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was asked, why are you not worried? He said, I, I realized that my sustenance, my rizq is written for me. And I know that it will, it will come to me. So I don't worry. I don't worry. Now you feel that the parents are working day and night and uh, they are just uh, trying to, to provide for the future of their children. Well, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask us for, to perform the ibadah of the future? Of course not. So Allah will not ask us to, to do that. He, he did not ask us to perform that ibadah. So why we would be worried about our rizq in the future? لو أنكم توكلتم على الله حق توكله لرزقكم just rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, people should work. Yes, of course. But during the uh, money to be generated after work, there are things 
that are very basic. Amana, someone should be trustworthy, someone should be uh, trusty. There is sabr, someone should practice patience while working. And there is sadaq. The way he performs his work is with faithfulness, sadaq. And there is muraqabatullahi azza wa jal. There is an important issue that Allah is overwatching us. So when we are doing any job and we are getting our salary, we have to ask ourselves, is our salary 100% halal? Did we, did we waste any time during the uh, um, working hours? Because if we do, then the money that we got for that wasted time is not lawful. We have to be careful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to work and we know the rules that we have to be careful. The, the uh, work should be lawful and there should be uh, ethics in work and there should be something very important that people should not transgress anybody. People should not take take the money of anybody that that money would not be lawful. lawful. That money would be haram if someone takes the money of people that who, the, uh, who he, he, he does not deserve. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in Surah An-Nisan. He said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la ta'kulu amwalakum baynakum bil batil. Oh, you who believe, do not consume one another's wealth unjustly. Do not. Because that would be mal al haram. And the mal al haram is, is very, uh, uh, will lead to great punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Now, if we want to talk about something that about the the other meaning of al-kasb al-halal so gaining lawfully what is the best thing to gain in this dunya the lawful thing it's to gain a true friend for the sake of Allah only to love him for the sake of Allah, to take care of him for the sake of Allah, to help him for the sake of Allah, to advise him for the sake of Allah, and he does the same. So why is this uh, considered uh, an amazing halal gain? Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu qal, he said that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إن من عباد الله لا أناس ما هم بأنبياء ولا شهداء يغبطهم الأنبياء والشهداء يوم القيامة بمكانهم من الله تعالى. So Sayyidina Umar narrated that the Prophet of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said there there are people from the servants of Allah who are neither prophets nor martyrs. And what happened to them? Why are they those special? The, the prophets and the martyrs will envy them on the day of, of a resurrection. Why? For their rank from, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قالوا يا رسول الله تخبرنا من هم So the people has said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who are those people? And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, 
هم قوم تحابوا بروح الله على غير أرحام بينهم ولا أموال يتعاطونها فوالله إن وجوههم لنور وإنهم على نور لا يخافون إذا خاف الناس ولا يحزنون إذا حزن الناس So who are those people? Those are, as described by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are the people who love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without having any mutual kinship, uh, without giving any property to one, to another, to the other, to each other, they, they, they are true, true friends. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is saying, I swear by Allah, their faces will glow and they will be sitting in pulpits of light on the day of judgment. So they do not fear, they do not have any fear on the day of judgment. This is a kasib halal to gain of dunya. This is a good thing to gain from dunya. And it's very lawful. So those people will not have fear when people, uh, people will be afraid on the day of judgment. Then Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read the ayah, أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Then, so, so what are those people? Those are verily the friends of Allah. There is no, uh, there is no fear, and shall uh, uh, nor shall they grieve. لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. So this is the real gain in this dunya. This is the real halal gain in this dunya. It's what helps you being saved on the day after. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى يَقُولُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَيْنَ الْمُتَحَابُونَ بِجَلَالِكِ الْيَوْمَ أُظِلُّهُمْ فِي ظِلِّي يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلِّي so this is narrated by Abu Huraira and that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying on the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, where are those people who have mutual love for the sake of my glory? So today, on this day, on the day of judgment, I shall shelter them in my shade when there is no, when there will be no shade except of mine. This is the real gain of the dunya. This is what, what is seeking, what we should be seeking in this dunya. The lawful relationships between us. The fruitful relationship between us. This is what will help us on the day of judgment. There should be a good relation between the husband and the wife, between friends, between uh, in-laws and their son-in-laws and daughter-in-laws. There should be all lawful, halal relationships. But sometimes people are... Uh, they don't, they don't care about this. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu said it earlier that Now some, at some point of this dunya, at some time of this dunya, the people will not care. Where did they, they earn their money? Is it lawful or not? 
how how the relations are are they lawful or not so if someone is not sure hundred percent then he should he should leave it for the sake of Allah and Sayyidina al-Hasan ibn Ali radiallahu anhu yaqul hafizdu min rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam da'ma yuribuka ila ma la yuribuk so al-Hasan the son of Ali radiallahu anhu he said I remember these words I, I memorized I know that these words are said by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam give up what is doubtful to you for that which is not doubtful some people might have certain things that they will they will they are not sure are these halal or haram and they will go from one shaykh to another from one shaykh to another just to get a fatwa for that but Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Wabisa who once came and asked him about uh, what's righteous and what is sin, what is halal and what's haram. So he said, he said to him, استفتي نفسك و, uh, استفتي, uh, قلبك ولو أفتاك الناس. Even if you ask people for a fatwa, what should you do? Just ask yourself for a decision. Even if you have asked you about it, sometimes you will feel, I'm not comfortable. I know there is something wrong here. So, now which heart is that? It's the heart that is being connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your affairs, in your, in your routine uh, daily life, then Allah will protect you when you will fall down. Be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't worry about any other things. So in this dunya, we have to have, we have to gain lawful things. And the best gain that we are going to, to get in this dunya is not just ma uh, material, it's not just money, it's not just knowledge, it's not just, no, we have to gain our akhirah. And how can we get connected to the akhirah? How can we gain this uh, akhira, uh, relief through Quran and through the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every day you have to gain your, uh, your rizq of Quran. Read it, understand it, memorize it. Remember that it will come on the day of judgment and it will argue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you get into, into heavens. This is the Quran. And the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is another important gain that we are going to get for our akhirah. So, we have to connect our life to the life of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to connect our heart to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and going to him is the beginning of the road. We have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. Ibrahim alayhi salam said وَقَالَ إِنِّي ذَاهِبٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ So I'm going, indeed, I'm going to my Lord. He will guide me. 
So depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And always remember that gaining what is lawful will get the heart to be filled with light. But eating what's not lawful and getting what's not lawful would get the heart to rust. And when the heart rusts, it gets dark and it gets black. And that having a black heart, having a rusty heart, well, is one of the reasons that dua will not be accepted. So each mistake someone makes would leave a, a black dot on the heart. If this black heart, dot is not erased with istighfar, with doing good things, then the, the heart would get rusty. It will not, at one point, it will not be able to differentiate between what's right and what's wrong. So the lawful thing, the good thing, is the title for the happiness of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when, when someone is good, then he will not accept anything other than good, other anything that than lawful, than halal. So he will just say the halal words, the, the, the good words. He will he will just uh, practice the good manners. He will just spread what's good, what's halal among among people. So everything about him will be halal. Everything, all his relations with people, with parents, with everyone will be halal completely. And this is the real gain, the real kasb halal of dunya. So it's not just the kasb, the gaining of, of money of dunya, no. It's, we are ordered to get to get to work in this dunya so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this dunya in our pockets not in our hearts because we are seeking for the akhirah we are we want the real halal kasab the real halal gain of the akhirah we want to be saved we want to be with uh, with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We want to be of the people, of the group of people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them several times in the Quran. Radiyallahu anhum wa radu'an. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. This is the goal of having lawful life, of having halal relations, of having halal life with all that the word halal means. And until we meet next time, inshallah, I send my salam and your salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.